Local Agency Formation Commission uh, to this day, Thursday, October 8th, 2020 uh, at 7.04 p.m. Olivia, would you please call the roll? Without a doubt, Chair McEntee? Oh, here. Okay, Chair, Vice Chair Murray? Here. Commissioner Connolly? Here. Commissioner Arnold? Absent. Commissioner Kohler? Here. Commissioner Caius? Here. Commissioner Loader? I know I saw Larry. He's here. Larry, can you unmute, you, unmute yourself and say here, please? Down at the bottom, Larry. Bottom left, Larry. There we go. Let's try this. Okay. There you go. Okay. Alternate Chair Rodoni. Absent. Alternate Chair Moody, or Alternate Commissioner, sorry. I don't know why I do that. Alternate Commissioner Moody. Here. Awesome. Alternate Commissioner Skelton. Not here. And then Alternate Commissioner Campbell. Present. Awesome. Uh, Chair, we have quorum. Thank you very much, Olivia. <clears throat> All right, so we'll move to agenda review. Does anyone have uh, a request to remove or rearrange any items on the agenda or would anyone like to make a motion? Madam Chair, uh, we have four members of the public who are all here to speak on item number four. So we might want to move item four before item three in the public hearing section. I don't have a problem with that unless, if, uh, unless anybody else does. Does anyone have any issues with that? Would anyone like to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda moving uh, item number four up to the top of the list. Uh, so uh, moving, um, sorry, moving to the top of the public hearing items. Is that what we're asking for? Still leaving consent as is? Okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Moved and seconded. Olivia, would you please call the roll? Olivia, you're on mute. Chair McEntee? Yes. Vice Chair Murray? Yes. Commissioner Connolly? Aye. Commissioner Arnold, absent. Commissioner Kohler? Aye. Commissioner Caius? Aye. Commissioner Loader? Aye. Alternate Commissioner Moody? You don't need to call alternate commissioners for votes. Oh, thank you. The motion is approved unanimously. Fantastic, okay. Uh, then we will move to public open time. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the current agenda. All statements that require a response will be referred to staff for reply in writing or will be placed on the commission's agenda for consideration at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to three minutes. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on public open time on matters not on our current agenda? We have no hands raised in a chat. And no emails. And no emails. Okay, so then we will close public open time and move to the consent calendar. So these items, items are considered ministerial or non-substantive and subject to a single motion approval. Would anyone like to pull the items from consent? I don't see anything there. Would anyone like, uh, oh, so I, sorry, let's do public comment on this. Is there any public comment on the consent calendar? We have no hands raised and no emails received. Okay, we'll close uh, public comment on the consent calendar. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll move the item. A second. Moved and seconded. Olivia, will you call the roll, please? Chair McEntee? Aye. Vice Chair Murray? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Aye. Commissioner Kohler? Aye. Commissioner Caius? Aye. Commissioner Loader? Aye. Chair, the motion is approved unanimously. Great, so we'll move into our public hearing items. So we're gonna to go to item four first, approval of final draft, San Rafael Regional Supplemental Municipal Service Review for Marin County Flood Control and Water Conservation District Zones six and seven. Jason, do you have a staff report? Sure, um, so last at the last commission meeting, you received a full review of the public draft that was released 
Um, since then, we have received public comment. I will note, as you will see in my staff memo, um, that I had thought originally that the that the draft report had been sent to the advisory board for flood control zone six. Turns out that that did not occur. As soon as I found that out, um, I reopened up public comment, gave the flood zone six advisory board extra time uh, beyond what was the original time frame for public comment so they could get comment in. We did receive three comments from, written comments from them. I actually talked with uh, two of those three people on the phone uh, multiple times, traded emails and everything else with them to make sure we got their comments and added in what we could into the draft report. Um, so there are some changes to the draft report uh, that you will see in front of you from the, from the public draft that we originally had uh, there. There were quite a few good comments that, they, that we got in those written comments that I could not include in the written report, partly because they pertain to things that are outside of the MSR itself. Um, there were very good questions about the discussion around should the district or should the flood control district uh, take its zone and move that work over to uh, the city of San Rafael to do, as you know, that it's a split responsibility. And they asked some very good questions that in some ways were a little premature for where the city and the district are at in the process, um, or we're just outside of the MSR. But all those questions I did forward to district staff so that they can hopefully answer those should they choose to move forward with trying to do a merger of having the city of San Rafael just take over all the work for the flood control district, um, which is a good administratively efficient idea to do. Um, although I know some of the people who live in the area may not be 100% thrilled with that idea right now, partly because not everything is known about how that will exactly work. Um, and I think when their questions get answered, hopefully it will, they will get answered in a way that is efficient for them and is, will be satisfactory to the people who live in the area. But that is, as I mentioned last meeting, is actually something that's outside of LAFCO's, LAFCO's purview. For strange reasons in how state government code is written, we review flood control districts and we look at their individual zones, but we don't control boundaries when it comes to the individual zones. We can only control the overall district's boundary, which is a countywide boundary, as it turns out. So there's really nothing for us to amend there. Um, it's more about the individual zones they have and how they choose to manage them. Um, so on that note, uh, what you have in front of you is a resolution to approve <coughs> the report as it stands. Um, if you wanna make any amendments to it, uh, please let us know, although I try and avoid making amendments to the final draft, but if there's anything that anyone sees that needs to be changed, we're happy to have that discussion. Um, and I know that we have four members of the public, I believe all of them advisory board members who are here to speak for when we get to a public comment. Thank you, Jason. Are there any questions from the commission regarding this MSR? I, I just want to thank Jason uh, Sashi. Uh, he, he did reopen this item. Um, I had some initial comments. We did have uh, one uh, person commenting outside flood zone six, but immediately adjacent to it. And it's good to see the flood zone members have had a chance to review it and comment it as well. So I, th I think it, uh, makes the document a little stronger uh, going forward. So thanks again. And looking forward to hearing the others. Yeah, and I'll, I'll probably make a few comments at some point, but looking forward to hearing from the public. Good, I was gonna call on you too. Um, so uh, no, no other questions before we get into the public hearing. Okay, looks like there are no questions. So I will now open the public hearing. And uh, uh, Jason, is Olivia going to um, I'll, I'll call on the folks because I know who they are and I know which order they popped up on the screen. So I'm just going to call on the public, the four public members in the order that I saw you pop up in the meeting itself, if that's acceptable to the four of you, unless you have a specific order, at which point I will figure out how to make that specific order work. Um, I can't figure out how to raise his hand. There's some. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, so okay. the first one that I saw come in was named Linda Rayburn, but I know you're technically not Linda. So if you wanted, I'll unmute you and let you go first. So I asked to unmute, so now you have to unmute yourself. There you go. I prefer Ken Dickerson go first, please. Oh, sure. We'll let Ken go first. Not a problem. Uh, Ken, I will ask you to unmute. Oh, I think Olivia and I are racing to see who can do it first. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, my name's Ken Dickinson. I'm vice chair of the advisory board of the Flood Zone 6, along with other members of the advisory board. 
We have up to 22 years of service on the board. We feel a responsibility to the flood zone and our neighbors in front of flooding threats in our neighborhood. I have three comments related to the report. That my first comment in terms of how the idea of transferring Flood Zone 6 to the city of San Rafael came about. It wasn't clear to me from the report who initiated it and why. <clears throat> and I'd love to hear that clarified. My second comment um, regards the Flood Zone 6 advisory board members not being included in the LAFCO process initially. District staff has not given a satisfactory explanation of why members were not notified about the report process, why the Flood Zone 6 annual meeting was not held, which is where this normally would have been dealt with, and why the three terms of, uh, the terms of three advisory board, me board members were allowed to expire, effectively excluding the, uh, excluding the advisory board from an opportunity to participate fully in the discussions of the possible transfer. I don't think any of us are saying we're against the idea, but we are against being excluded from the process itself. Many residents in our neighborhood are not happy about this either. It seems to me this is why the advisory board exists, to be involved in these kinds of decisions fully and to have some kind of transparency in how the whole thing is, uh, dis is dealt with. So we want to have a fully open and public and fully transparent process. We've made attempts to get responses from the county staff, but we, they seem to be falling on deaf ears. We represent the residents of Flood Zone 6 and we take our responsibilities seriously. And finally, staff is recommending approval of the resolution to transfer the zone. They have an alternative option to consider con continue consideration. We are asking that we are asking you to take option two, continue consideration, to allow the Flood Zone Six Advisory Board to have its annual meeting and a full and open discussion of the issues involved in this report and any possible transfer. Thank you, Madam Chair. If I can quickly just correct one thing there. The recommendation is not to approve the transfer of the district, it's to approve the MSR itself, um, which is a completely separate issue and item from the, the district transfer. That is something that is still has a lot to work to do and the county will be doing that, not LAFCO itself. Um, so if you want me to go on with other public comments, I can. Okay, uh, Stuart had his hand raised, so I'm assuming you guys have an order and hopefully he's the next one in that order. And so I asked you to unmute, you have to unmute yourself now. Yes, there we go. Hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to speak to you. My name is Stuart Shepard and I have served on the board of Flood Zone 6 for 22 years as the chairperson. I have had numerous occasions to work with county staff to improve the conditions in our zone. Together we have improved the zone and protected the property of all its inhabitants. Our annual meeting has taken place early in March. This year, the meeting did not take place. And as we all know, early March was a time of historical changes. It is, it is reasonable that our meeting was, was postponed. However, we heard nothing about the meeting being canceled or postponed. Given the excellent support and cooperation that I had received over many years from county staff, I was not alarmed. I'm in education and as the realities of the pandemic wore on through spring and summer, changes at work required most of my focus. About two weeks ago, I received a copy of the LAFCO report. After reading it, I was surprised to think that Flood Zone 6 had not been included at some point during its development. It, it began, um, I began to ask questions and I, I found that three members of of our board, Flood Zone 6 terms, had been allowed to expire. I also found that the day of public comment was fast approaching. I now realize that the report recommends that Flood Zone 6 responsibilities be turned over to the city of San Rafael. Somehow, this all seems a bit unfair. I asked that the annual meeting we were supposed to have in March take place, that the board members that 
uh, are reinstated as would have happened had we, the meeting taken place in March. I also ask that we be allowed to continue the discussion of the LAFCO report as Flood Zone 6 board members. Uh, you've heard my colleague Ken say, it's not that we're against anything in the report. We just want to be part of the process. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, so after that, we have Linda or Marianne. Marianne, you had your hand. I see your hand raising your hand, so I'll let you go next. And I asked you to unmute, so if you can unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for hearing our comments. So my name is Mariana Nanestad. I'm a resident of San Rafael Meadows and a member of Zone 6, Flood Zone 6, um, and have been on the advisory board since 2016. The advisory board for Flood Zone 6 was put in place when the district was set up back in the 1960s. I think this was an excellent way to get input from the citizens closest to the issues in the zone. This is also mentioned in the LAFCO report. This year's annual meeting of the Flood Zone 6 Advisory Board did not get called, noticed, nor canceled. And due to the COVID pandemic, I frankly didn't question the matter, thinking we would be called once the meeting restrictions were lifted. I asked that the Flood Zone 6 Advisory Board be reinstated and that the discussion of the LAFCO report continues so that the advisory board can be part of the discussion and due process can be followed. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Um, and then, uh, Linda, I'm sorry, Linda, I don't know what your actual first name is, so we're just gonna unmute you and let you introduce yourself there. Hello, my name is Wayne Rayburn, not Linda, Wayne. Uh, I am the president of the San Rafael Homeowners Association uh, and a current or was a member of the Flood Six Zone uh, Advisory Board. As you've heard, we do not have our annual meeting. And due to not having this meeting, three of our board members' terms expired. I'm asking you to continue this report until after we can get our board members reinstated and discuss the transfer. This is a huge decision, and we would like to be involved in making that decision. But thank you very much for your time, and please take our recommendation into concern. All right, Madam Chair, we have no other hands raised, and we received no e other emails. Okay, thank you very much. So then we'll go ahead and um, close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for deliberation. Why don't we start with Commissioner Connolly? <clears throat> thank you and good evening, everyone. Um, let me start by thanking all the speakers and, and thank you for your service on the Flood Zone Advisory Board. And I concur with you that uh, you could have been brought into the loop a lot sooner on this LAFCO discussion. Um, I have to confess, I'm kind of playing catch up myself uh, in terms of some of the, the history that led up to this recent history since March or thereabouts that led up to this, uh, as well as some of the twists and turns that would likely be involved in the larger issue, which I think Jason correctly pointed out, is beyond this MSR and really goes to the issue of um, the city of San Rafael taking over the zone. Um, my understanding at this time is that, that any such recommendation would be based on the fact that all of the assets within the zone as well as easements within the zone are within the city of San Rafael. Um, so I think on the face of it, it makes some sense to be having this conversation. My other understanding is that um, obviously the process uh, has a ways to go. Um, all community input will be welcomed and taken into consideration. 
uh, I actually was not aware that your terms had expired. Um, uh, that was brought to my attention recently. I guess the issue for me, because theoretically I could reappoint everyone, uh, is does that really move the ball forward vis-a-vis -vis you providing your input as you can now and, and presumably will at every step of the process going forward? Uh, both to me, to, to county staff, to LAFCO, to the city, uh, et cetera. So um, as one person said, we, we want to be the pro part of the process. You are and will continue to be. Um, I don't, I'm not sure you need to wear the moniker of a body that may not exist, in other words. But that, again, I'm open to talking about that more. On that point, um, one thing I would like clarified, and I believe the MSR itself does recommend a citizen advisory board. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that is correct. What, what I am recommending is that everything that exists now that the county does on behalf of the district continue to exist um, under the city of San Rafael. So the boundaries wouldn't change. The advisory board should be moved over. One of the comments that we kind of got for, I forget which of the advisory board members made this comment to me, but I think it's a great idea is as part of the agreements, there should be uh, when San Rafael, between the city of San Rafael and the, the district <laughs> is that all the current advisory board members be moved over to the new advisory board that the city of San Rafael would take over. Because technically the district's advisory board would disappear, but the city of San Rafael would create its own advisory board Right. So, yeah, no, and that's my understanding. I mean, we could certainly make a recommendation, yeah. but I think it would be up to them. The other piece, I think, is that all the funding would still stay in the right. town. Is that right? Yeah, that would be, that's our recommendation. And if I would not advise anyone to accept anything other than the funding stays within the flood zone um, and that the flood zone is all the money stays there, the county would, or the district would technically transfer over the ad valorem that is created to the city and the city would then set up a separate fund, separate from its general fund. It would be a, a sealed off fund that could only be used for flood zones as six uh, activities or whatever they call the future flood zone six. It probably would have a slightly different name, but that area would get that, that money and it would stay within that group. Jason, I'm trying to find where in the MSR that uh, recommendation is just so people can follow along. Can you oh, sure. tell us uh, where that is? Give me one second to pull up to that spot, spot here. It <coughs> should be in the determinations. Um, but let me find it here real quickly. Um, so on page 11 of the final draft, which is page 188 of your packet, um, is the start of flood zone six established and it then gets into um, having the, dis the district advisory board should discuss as needed when, pro oh, no, sorry, wrong part. I'm trying to read here real quickly. Um, Maybe that's not the right spot here. Um, I just want to give everybody some comfort that it's in there, if, you know, to. Give me one second to change. Smart coordination. Um, Uh, the work that would be needed to transfer include, including the general administration, which includes such things as permitting process for maintenance of the creeks and oversight of the advisory board, in, including keeping the current board members to ensure the community and history of the zone um, is where the flood zone staff is, which is the first paragraph of on page 11 of a, part A there um, in the middle of the page um, is where that the advisory board is. Thank you. Go ahead, Damon. Yeah, so I think I've made my main points and, and I'm happy to talk offline with, with the, the callers. Um, uh, I'm open to hearing kind of, that is the basic question on what you're raising though, is kind of given that it looks like we're moving in a certain direction and again in order to do so your input is going to be crucial um 
in effect, are you temporary advisory board members or, you know, is, with the understanding that there, either way, as this transitions, there will be an advisory board, you know, what advantages are to uh, kind of reinstating right now or whatever. I'm certainly open to it. I'll probably talk to county staff a little bit more as well, but it sounds like we can probably have this conversation offline uh, as well, unless you want to weigh in now. But uh, those are kind of my main thoughts. And again, just to reiterate, I'm, I'm somewhat playing catch up myself at this point as well. Jason, could you just clarify, um, maybe this would help. Um, so if the, what is the effect of approving the MSR and uh, what then process steps would come would would happen that uh, the folks here who are very interested would be able to engage in after our work is done. Yeah. So for flood zone six itself, I don't view there as being any impact by approving this report. The county had mentioned this to us when we first started doing the report, um, and we're starting to like have discussions with them about what was being done. So this is not something that's like new from the county's perspective. They've been moving this you know, having these discussions with the city before we ever started doing this report. And I don't think us approving or not approving this report today is going to have any impact on that. I will say where the potential impact is, is actually for flood zone seven. Um, they have an upcoming ballot measure, a mail ballot measure. It's not gonna be on this November's ballot, but they're gonna have an independent mail ballot uh, to, to have a discussion about a special assessment to raise the money that they need to, to deal with their flood wall. Not having a final report for them on that could have an impact on how the discussion goes around getting uh, that special assessment done. So I, while I'm not concerned about flood zone six, I think that there's a lot of good discussions and clearly the advisory board members or former advisory board members, depending on how you want to look at them right now, um, are very well aware of this. And I'm, I know, <laughs> have watched over the last couple of weeks, they are hounding county staff to make sure that they're being paid attention to. So I I have no doubt that, they, that that stuff is going to move forward one way or the other. It's just a matter of making sure the flood zone residents are brought into the loop on it. And I think that's the big missing piece. And our report doesn't really do anything about that specific side of the equation. And, and on seven, I can note that um, I appreciated the um, uh, you taking into the feedback from last time. And uh, I, I think the, the updated report uh, read, or MSR reads well. Thank you. Okay, so just to, to reiterate and clarify, Jason, that um, it, by approving this report, it doesn't um, really change anything for flood, flood control zone six, um, but the next steps that would go forward with the county um, are where this group needs to be involved. And it sounds like um, Commissioner and Supervisor Connolly would be interested in um, continuing discussions about whether to reappoint members and do whatever would need to, to, would need to happen in order for those members to have their seat at the table. Um, but approving this report is critical for flood control zone seven. Approving this report at this time uh, is important for flood control zone seven because their uh, ballot is dependent on the report being completed. Is that correct? I wouldn't say they're the, the, the ballot is dependent on it, but it would be very helpful for <clears> them <throat> to have the report out there in the final, final version. Okay. Um, Okay, well then um, we'll move to uh, um, Vice Chair Murray. I think you might want to comment on this one. Yeah, uh, well again, thanks for basically the entire Flood Zone 6 board to be here and comment on the item. And I, I think it's is great to catch this, provide an opportunity for everyone to review it, understand what it means um, and comment on it. I, I, I want to make sure that the funds are stay within city of Santa Fe oh, as part of this flood zone it doesn't bleed over somewhere else in the transfer between the county and the city. Uh, and, and then I think it's very good within the document, it shows that the current flood zone board members will continue uh, as uh, Mr. Dickinson said, the amount of experience dealing with issues in this area uh, is very helpful. Um, there's one, one other thing I did bring up to our chair is that uh, uh, the Meadows area is just one section of the flood zone. So 
uh, city may want to look at uh, some diversity now that the Redwoods is built out and there's uh, a predominance, uh, of basically a very high population of uh, other uh, renters and um, higher density areas that may want to participate as well. That would be something uh, as this goes forward to the city for them to look at and see if there could be some representation in the entire zone. Uh, but uh, I want to make sure the um, resolution captures uh, the comments and concerns. I think uh, in effect it, it referenced the document and the document talks about that. So uh, if this is approved tonight and uh, if it's possible, I just would like to hear back from uh, the flood zone members who are attending tonight after the comments back from our chair uh, and our county supervisor, if uh, there's a certain level of comfort now moving forward. It sounds like from the county supervisor, there's some uh, process to engage the county staff as well as uh, hopefully contacting the city to make sure that transfer is uh, relatively smooth and these uh, uh, unanswered items tonight are answered and, and going forward it transfers well without a whole lot of uh, change, at least in terms of the um, board makeup and uh, review of the items in that area. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Murray. Are there any other deliberative comments from any other member of the commission? And I'm not seeing any other comments. Um, would anybody like to uh, make a motion? And do we have, um, Mala, I don't know if you wanna read the motion that would be made here. It's, it's the, I guess, just the resolution, the one resolution, right? It's the next one that has all the resolutions. It would be closing the public hearing and adopting resolution 20-30. Okay, would anybody like to make that motion or are there, if there are no further deliberative comments? Uh, and, and sure. Go ahead. Just, it, it, is it possible to touch base with the board members here tonight? If uh, what we- Yeah, it looks like Ken is raising available. his hand. Okay, um, sure, we can go back to right, Ken. Thank, thank Thank, yes, thank you. You're directly asking him a question. We can call him back up and I will ask him to unmute it. Then. Yeah. So you, you, the, uh, okay. question I'll, you I'll the question you're directly question. asking is, yeah. With all the commentary tonight on this item uh, and the assurances that the board uh, will, there'll be requests to the city to carry on with the board and have uh, a meeting to resolve these uh, items. Is that acceptable? Um, I, well, I, I, I'm, I would like Stuart actually, Stuart is our chairperson, so I, I would like Stuart to weigh in. I, I am the vice chair, and I, I think it, it seems like you're, you're aware, fully aware of what our concerns are. And we, we just do feel a responsibility to this area that we live in. Some of us went through flooding, resolved it with the help of the flood zone, <clears throat> But we're really concerned about 20 years from now. That's our major concern. And so there's a lot of subtleties around the zone. And I don't think all of us are convinced that transferring it is necessarily a good idea. And those subtleties are not, they developed in the very last part of the LAFCO report, but they need to be fully uh, explored and exposed to Everybody, so everybody's really on the same page about it. If I may, um, I'm I'm not um, fully sure what you're asking of us at this time. Um, we I I did hear uh, Supervisor Connolly suggest that he could reinstate all the board members. I think that's a great first start. Um, to ask us to approve or disapprove at this time might be just a bit premature. We would like to meet and have further discussion before we would say yes or no. So I, uh, just from a, from a process standpoint, um, Mr. Shepard, I, I think what, what, I, what I was trying to uh, elucidate and, and uh, Vice Chair Murray or Commissioner Connolly, Connolly please uh, jump in if, if um, I'm not getting this quite right. But from a process standpoint, um, what Jason seemed to outline was that um, this MSR is just sort of an indication of a, of a set of information with some recommendations 
the process would be initiated and completed by the, you know, the county and the city of San Rafael. So we have your supervisor right here who's kind of said that he's sort of willing to do whatever he needs to do to make sure that you all have a seat at the table and, and, and are part of those discussions of the implementation. But this particular body, LAFCO, would not be involved in that. And um, the approval of this report um, or not approval of this report doesn't really um, have any bearing on the rest of that process. And I think what you all are concerned about is the process after this. So um, I, I think that my question to you would be, given that, um, are you comfortable with us continuing on with our part of the process, given that you know, your supervisor is uh, engaged here and, and ready to help you with the, the next steps from the county level, which is not, that this body would not be involved in? I feel like I'm being put on the spot a little bit, but in general, I would say, I, I would agree that as long as we are in the process going forward, that was our goal for this evening to make sure that we, um, to coin a phrase that someone else said, that we, we are afforded a seat at the table moving forward. Okay, um, it looks like uh, um, Mariana has a hand up. Um, Jason, I think that you'd said that if we had a specific question, um, we could yes. go back to the public then. Um, so Mariana, I guess I'll ask you the same question. Are you, are you um, given what we just talked about, are you comfortable moving forward with just, just our part of the process, which really doesn't have anything to do with the implementation? I guess what I'm concerned about, and I know that's not exactly what you're asking me, but my concern is that if, if the advisory board is not reinstated, then it's gonna be much more difficult for us to be able to get a seat at the table, I feel. But if the advisory board follows the report and follows everything we get reinstated, I think then it's gonna be a lot easier for, for the city to say, oh, we have an advisory board and we can't ignore that. Otherwise we become public entities that are single people and we won't have the same voice, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Connolly, um, do you have any any thoughts? Again, I'll circle back with county staff and the advisory board member. Okay, uh, Mr. Rayburn. Wait, hold on, I gotta ask you to unmute. So now you can unmute yourself, Mr. Rayburn. Okay, I'm gonna mute it now. Um, so you're asking us to go ahead and approve and agree with transferring to San Francisco, uh, to San Rafael from the county? Uh, no, we're, we're, the, no, we're, what, what we're asking is we, the LAFCO has just prepared this report and issued a recommendation and approving this report um, would then allow the process to continue um, from the county and the city side and we would not be involved in the implementation of that. So, uh, uh, and, and then, and this report is also tied to the flood zone six, six uh, municipal service review, which is needed for their ballot measure to go forward. So we're, we're not, that's, that's what we're here to do. The next part of the process, which is where you all wanna have input is with the county and the city of San Rafael. Exactly. I mean, I, we don't wanna hold up flood zone seven, but we definitely want to have an input on if we're going to transfer or not from the county to the city or not. And mm -hmm. since we didn't have a choice or didn't have a, an opinion, or didn't have a meeting and stuff, we feel very slighted that we didn't have any import, import on any of this report at all that you're having to, done tonight. Thank you. Thank Can you, I Mr. Rayburn. Question, Chair McAfee? Yes, Chair, Commissioner Kohler. Um, so I would say this is that I think one of the things that's not coming across is that by this report, nothing forces this process to move forward and LAFCO is not part of this at all. But in going through the MSR itself and looking at the page 11, there's probably, and I don't know if this is suitable, and I'm not sure where we would put it, but would there be anything wrong with having something under flood zone six, where it starts talking about the advisory board saying during the COVID-19 
pandemic and subsequent shutdowns, uh, the advisory board um, terms expired. And would it be, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a writer of these MSRs. I'm just making a couple of suggestions that might provide a little comfort and that um, it's recommended that uh, the advisory board potentially be reinstated to be part of the potential process. And it's really a potential process. Is there some way to put in two sentences to that effect? Mm -hmm. Because really we're not even by approving this MSR, there's no guarantee that this process would even happen. It has, it's just stating the possibility. So I'm just wondering if it's possible to add a couple sentences back further in the document, not at the accountability section or not in the resolution that might just clearly state that because in the MSR, we're talking about an advisory board. And unfortunately, the advisory board has lapsed because of this COVID-19 pandemic. And I guess I would ask Damon if, if adding a couple of sentences like that are problematic or is that just presuming something that not a great idea? It doesn't really address my original question. And that is under these circumstances, does it make sense to reinstate a board? The, the only I, the only reason I would think that but, it would make a difference is because the recommendation is to continue the current board members. So if they aren't reinstated, um, that could be interpreted um, to mean that they wouldn't continue. So th that would be the only thing that I yeah, I and I would yeah, that. that that but was I, it, but I you mean that it was that specific. Um, I, I don't have a problem either way. Uh, I just Jason, the, the interesting oh, stating that right now there isn't an advisory board because terms expired makes the point it's more accurate for our report. Jason, do you have, or, or, or maybe Mala, uh, what do you think about adding a sentence to memorialize just that one detail, um, which probably happened, you know, after this was written, um, that the, uh, that the terms of some board members had lapsed or some, something to memorialize that situation um, and, highlight the importance of the advisory board in the process. Yeah, so I didn't become aware of the advisory board issue until we were like literally putting the packet together. So I didn't really have a chance to even try and figure out how to address that in here. Um, I do think that, that there is a good point that was raised by, I forget which commissioner it was, but one of you raised the point of, if we're gonna be asking for the city of San Rafael to take the advisory board members on and there's not an advisory board anymore, how do they know who to accept and put over to the new system? I think that, that is a legitimate question and concern. Um, I don't have a big deal if you want to give me some leeway. The one thing I do have a, I want to make sure about is don't pin me too much on what I need to put in there. Give me some flexibility. Cause like, if, I don't know if the reason why the appointments occurred was because of COVID. It may have been that these appointments actually really lapsed before that. Um, I just don't know when the terms physically lapsed in the system. Um, and so I would want to have the flexibility to make sure that I just get the correct information in there. I personally don't have an issue. If you wanted to add a sentence in there about that, I could figure out a place to put it. Just give me the authorization to do it. I will add it in and then we will consider this draft final, assuming legal counsel doesn't have any issues with that process. I would be fine using it. No, I, I think it's fine to put a factual statement once we confirm um, what, when and, and what occurred with the terms. So I think if, if the, if you, uh, put a sentence in or, or some some uh, statement in there memorializing the situation of some board members terms lapsing I believe it was three um, terms lapsing so that that's uh, memorialized in there and and I think Commissioner Kohler's suggestion about COVID-19 was just to try to yeah. uh, you know give, give the benefit of the doubt there but I think that's that we don't have to it doesn't have to be directed that way I think it's just you know however you want to put it in there um, to memorialize that and make sure that as the process moves forward, um, that's in there. Okay. Uh, let me add one more thing. I think this has been a good discussion and again, appreciate the input. I think listening to it and, and kind of fully understanding the situation 
I am inclined to reappoint the board members. And is it, uh, uh, Commissioner Connolly, uh, from a process standpoint, is that just something that you can just do, or is that does it have to follow some larger process? I'm gonna. I'll talk to county staff and okay. talk to the board members as indicated. Yeah, the okay. process is he. I don't know if he personally nominates, but the advice the the district, the water district board itself has to make a motion and approve it at, a, at one of its meetings, which is the Board of Supervisors meeting, and then they adjourn for the five. The flood control zone, not the water board, the flood control zone. Yeah, flood, sorry, flood control yeah. board. The, yeah, the flood control board has to board, do it. Sorry. As part of its regular process, it just gets put into the agenda and approved and <clears throat> moved on. But that, that is like the official process. I don't know how the nominations themselves work. But I know that's the approval. There's an application process, and okay. it's my district, so yeah. Yeah. So much more weight would be given to your your thoughts on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, given um, given that that addition um, that staff would make, does anyone want to make a motion? So, uh, Sashi, just well, thanks everyone for the input. I think it it really kind of moves us along. I, I, the document's really just an appraisal, a snapshot of the conditions of each of the flood zones. So we're kind of diving the details. It is merely a recommendation from LAFCO uh, that it, all this is another process. So I, it's great county supervisors um, make an effort to reappoint. And when this does happen in the future, or if it does or does not, that's to be seen. Uh, but, but at least things are reset uh, and folks who kind of be balanced on that going forward and continue with it. But uh, it seems like uh, from input from Jason, it's really important for us to prove these tonight, not a delay. Uh, I, I feel much more comfortable uh, in my initial contact with Jason is uh, have people had comments, reviewed this particularly locally, uh, the flood zone. So I'm really glad to see the entire flood zone here reviewing and commenting and uh, our response and our dialogue tonight. So appreciate everyone's input. I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, and I'm glad we did a second round with our flood zone members. So uh, I'd like to move to approve the item. Second. I Moved would and second. suggest a friendly amendment that with the um, giving the executive officer some flexibility to um, have a little discussion or a sentence or two on the advisory board uh, terms expiring. Thank, yes. thank you, Barbara. I think, yeah, that's accepted. Yeah, I think that was the intention for that to be in there, but thank you for, thank you de definitely for making sure that that was in there. Okay, so uh, moved and seconded with the amendment. Uh, Olivia, would you please call the roll? Chair McEntee? Aye. Vice Chair Murray? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Aye. Commissioner Arnold, who I saw slip in here. Commissioner Arnold, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Aye. Awesome. Commissioner Kohler? Aye. Commissioner Caius? Aye. Commissioner Loader? Commissioner Loader, you need to unmute yourself again. Aye. Beautiful. Chair, it passed unanimously. Very good. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, thank you so much to our public for, for uh, showing up and, and um, really making your voices heard. We really appreciate it. And uh, I would just say, uh, as we're going through this first round of, of MSRs um, in this particular study schedule, we're learning a lot about our noticing. And it seems like this is something that maybe should be made a note of that, um, uh, you know, these advisory boards that have to go through the county that we might want to make a little double check from our side to make sure that the, the noticing actually does happen. Okay, we will now uh, go back up to item number three, approval of the final draft Upper Ross Valley Municipal Service Review. Jason, will you please give the staff report? Sure, actually I'm gonna hand the staff report over to Jaron who masterfully made the entire document exist. Um, I will note he has been a little bit under the weather, so please be kind to him in, in not asking him too many questions that aren't necessary so he can uh, save his voice. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. 
Uh, yeah, so before the commission this evening is uh, the final draft of the Upper Ross Valley MSR, as well as the corresponding additions to the Marin Lafco work plan and all the resolutions for the spheres of influence for the jurisdictions encompassed within the MSR. All of the staff recommendations for the spheres of influence are to reaffirm, uh, so no proposed changes at this time. The public comment period closed on September 14th. Uh, we had a good amount of engagement from both commissioners and members of the public for official comments and edit suggestions. Uh, a table with the recorded public comments has been included in your packet tonight. Additionally, the two amendments to the Marin Lafco uh, work plan that resulted from this study are as follows. Uh, a working group to explore the possible creation of new fire services district from the existing agencies comprising the Ross Valley Depart Fire Department with the inclusion of Kentfield Fire Protection District and Central Marin Fire Department as other possible additions, and a working group to review the boundary irregularities along Crest Road between the towns of San Anselmo and the town of Ross. Staff's recommendation tonight is to approve all the attached resolutions on the Upper Ross Valley Area MSR, the sphere of influence approvals, and the work plan with any amendments as desired by the Commission. Thank you, Jaron. Are there questions from the commission? Um, I'll start with Commissioner Kohler. Yes. Well, first of all, I want to thank Jason and Jaron for spending so much time with me on so many of my comments and um, making what I think are most of those changes, and I appreciate that. Um, I do have a question, and particularly on the change for the Ross Valley Fire District. Um, I have a question, and I realize that MSRs are not about uh, JPAs. What, one of the things we discussed was having a very brief discussion of Ross Valley Paramedic, Paramedic, Paramedic Authority and also Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority, which I saw in there. What I didn't see was a real brief discussion of Ross Valley Paramedic Authority and that there's a reason why I was hoping that was in there, which leads to a couple of comments I have, which we, I can bring up later, but did I miss it in there? Aaron, you know it better than I do. I know we made some edits. Yes, so I added a couple of sentences into CSA 27 section. Can you tell me what page that's on, Jaron? I could try to find without it. Without completely pulling it's, it open. It's page okay. 115. Okay. I think, Jaron, okay. I think it's page 115 of the document. Starts on section. 114. Okay. Okay, unfortunately. All right, let me see if I can okay. get it. It looks like it, I see it, uh, Ross Valley Paramedic Authority on page four of the MSR, of the MSR itself, not the pull packet, but I don't know if that's the one you're. What page? Oh, yeah. Somebody said 114. What page am I supposed to be on? I don't know if Barbara you're looking at seven, seven C and the maybe document. Can, maybe somebody can just uh, screen share it. Yeah. Somebody's maybe somebody with a voice. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to screen share here. I just pulled up. It's section 12. It's page 129 of the packet, page 112 of the MSR itself. So I don't know which way you're looking at it, but I can screen share if you want me to. If you don't mind, that would be excellent. Let me just make sure I pull up the right document here. Um, it's this one here. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> so I'm hoping you have, you might have the agenda, you might have it split screen here with two things that I'm looking at on my main screen here. Um, so Jared, okay. where do you want to go here? I see it. The voters, uh, sure. uh, okay. And was established with eight member agencies at that time. Um, Okay, um, one of the things I don't see in there, and um, there's a reason why I'm bringing this up, is it would be good to explain what cities are covered by the Ross Valley um, Paramedic Authority, uh, one sentence on that, and, and that relates to uh, a change I would have in your accountability and also on the resolution, um, which I can bring up now just for ease of reference, but when you talk about um, 
this deals with that uh, number 6A under accountability on page 16 of the MSR, where you talk about creating this working group to look at a new district. And then you have a sentence that says, this new district would also assume responsibility for paramed paramedic services. Not necessary, that's what Ross Valley uh, Paramedic Authority does. It also includes Corte Madero Larkspur. So there's no need to assume that responsibility. That's a separate entity that covers all of Ross Valley. And so that, to me, it would be very helpful just to have, and I'm sorry, Jaron, you've done so much work, to have one sentence that just says, um, when you describe RVPA, what cities are included in that? And then I would take out the sentence under 6A that says, uh, this new district would also assume responsibility for paramedic services. So I will uh, ultimately defer to Jason for a full explanation of this, but I just wanna give the mindset behind the recommendation in and of itself was that as a matter of good governance, and lean governance, these entities that make up um, the RVPA would also make up the recommended entities for the new district if all parties were to partake. Now, I understand that it may be viewed as somewhat far-fetched for um, Central Marin and um, Kenfield to join on board. But in the end, if all of those were to come together, that would be all of the entities making up RVPA save for CSA 27. So that was the mindset in making that total recommendation to just downsize the number of agencies that we have currently putting all this together. Um, I'm I'm fine with making that change, but again, I would uh, I would defer to the executive officer for that. Yeah. So Jason, me... Jason, if I, before you, uh, can I just ask a clarifying question? Um, is is it is the is it um, when you when you're saying it, uh, would assume responsibility for paramedic services? I know that the at the state level there was some move to you know carve out paramedics and fire kind of in a different way. So either Jason or, or Mala can answer this. Um, it's saying the new district would assume responsibility for paramedic services, is that because they're delegated through whoever has the fire uh, municipal service responsibility? Is that no, why it's it, like that? This actually comes from a different discussion we're having that's based out of San Rafael Fire Working Group, where we're trying to merge the fire department together. One of the things that, it, that has occurred is they have their own paramedic district for the San Rafael area, and it has multiple jurisdictions that are in it. As a JPA, a paramedic district has no taxing authority. Um, so what we're looking to do is if we can create a governing body that oversees the entire same area as the paramedics JPA, <coughs> we could potentially give them some responsibility for it. So you have one taxing authority because what happened in San Rafael is San Rafael has one tax rate for the paramedics district. Marinwood has a lower tax rate. CSA 19 has a different tax rate. So my goal is if we can create one overarching governing body for the entire paramedics districts, and it, this goes for all of them, not just the one in Ross Valley or San Rafael, you potentially can create one authorizing body so that way when something goes out to a vote, one body doesn't, one area doesn't say yes, another say no, and then you have different rates and getting the exact same exact service. So it's more about is there a way to merge the paramedics JPA into a one governing body so you have one vote that everyone pays the same exact rate for. And that's one of the things we're looking at in the San Rafael working group is can we bring that in as part of this discussion of merging? Because in that case, we are merging all the same people from the same uh, paramedics district into one fire department. So why not have that same discussion if possible in Ross Valley and all the other paramedic districts as well? Is that, that's very logical. Is that anywhere in the document? I feel, I feel like if we had that explanation in there, it would make a little bit more sense. That's, Commissioner Kohler, I def, definitely jump in and- well, Here's what I would suggest. Here would I, here's what I would suggest. Um, and I hope you don't mind me interrupting, but, um, you know, that makes a heck of a lot of sense because with RVPA, when we went out for the, um, the increase in the fees, 
we had to do it in every jurisdiction mm -hmm. separately. And there was a time back in the past where Corte Madera didn't have, and they didn't have it. And their rate's a little bit different. So I like your explanation. One thing I would do just to make it, um, I would change that sentence to say, this new district may also assume responsibility for paramedic services. So it's not a for sure, but okay. that's part of what the working group would entail. And so I would change that in the accountability section. And also when we get to the resolution, the same sentence is in there. I would just do that. And if you would indulge me and potentially add that one sentence to the description of RVPA showing all the cities that are within it, I think that also brings it together nicely. So the, just those couple of changes, if, if that's amenable to you. And thank you for that explanation. Yeah, no problem. Happy to give you the explanation. And I don't have any objections to the, the two amendments you're doing. At the end of the day, it's up to the commission to decide if they want to approve the, all the stuff with those two amendments. It's up to the commission at this point. It sounds like that explanation really just kind of uh, makes it all come together and, and it seems like that really should be in there. Um, yeah, my only concern with putting the explanation in there is it starts to get into the general public and their desire to say, we don't want to be part of this larger group. We want to have our own individual voices in these small communities and could just cause some angst towards the process, the overall process that I don't think is necessary until we get to a spot where it, if we decide we're doing it, where we actually have that discussion with the general public. I, I think we're, it might be a little premature. It might sour people towards the process itself if they're reading that in a document before we ever have a discussion about with them about the general process. It, well, um, let me just ask this then. Um, Jaron, it, it, earlier in the document, does it indicate that the, the, uh, par uh, the paramedic JPA is funded inequitably? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. And that section is just really straightforward. I just asked for a very, and sorry, Jaron, for jumping in for you because I just read it. Um, I just asked for a simple description of it because it was very confusing not to have it in there because we talk about the CSA, which is this weird little entity. So all I'm saying is just kind of like when you describe Ross Valley Fire, you describe the four entities that are in it. And all I'm saying is it would just be more holistic to say these are the cities. It doesn't say anything about the taxing authority or any of that, because that's a JPA, which is not under our jurisdiction anyway. And that is just something that's sort of frustrating in general as we do these MSRs, because there, more and more there are JPAs that assume some of these duties. And in order to paint a complete picture, we have to somewhat mention them, and yet we don't have any jurisdiction. I, I don't know, Jason, what your thoughts are in general about that. Yeah, I mean, we've taken the policy. We've talked about this, yeah. When it comes to JPAs, the only JPAs that we really look at and have some level of official responsibility for are ones that are considered essential services for cities and towns where the cities and towns have given authority over to a JPA. So where there is a, a direct fire department or a police department that's run by a JPA system, we look at those. A paramedics, for whatever reason, is not considered an essential service of a city and town, so we don't have the authority to look at those. And if I could just jump back in for one second, I, for, for whatever it may or may not be worth, while it may be more kind of obscure than what is desired, on the final page of that section, it does show on a graph all of the agencies that are involved and their cut of, rather their piece of the pie as far as funding uh, RBPA goes. Oh, it does. Okay. I didn't see that, Jaron, but of course I missed the whole thing. So thank you. Then that's probably fine. Thank you. Thank you for your detail, deep dive into this, Commissioner Kohler and, and for staff for, for working, working on that. Um, are there any other questions from the commission before we open the public hearing? Uh, I'm not seeing any unless you see any, Jason. Nope. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and open the public hearing on this item. We have no hands raised and uh, no emails. <clears throat> okay, so we can go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the 
commission for deliberation. And actually, just to clarify, Mala, is are we supposed to deliberate and then close the public hearing, or is it like public comment? Is that I'm used to closing the public hearing and then having you deliberate. Okay, fine. So we'll close the either, public but hearing. But it's, we'll... Yeah, either way is, is fine as okay. well. There's no, I think, uh, legal requirement. Let's put it that way. Okay. I just wondered, because the last one time you, you added that in the motion, just wanted to make sure I was doing it the right way. There, there were a lot of speakers, and so I just really wanted to clarify when that was going to end, as opposed to here where we have no public speakers. Okay, got it. All right. Um, any deliberation or deliberative comments from the commission? Or does anyone want to make a motion with the suggested amendments? I'd like to make a motion to approve the final draft of the Upper Ross Valley Municipal Services Review with the one change to page 16, changing a wood to a many. Okay. And it, it, it's just that one, so we don't want to add anything about the funding, uh, uh, no, that no, explanation. I, Jaren's explanation, I think, was suitable. But do you want to have that added in, or? Do, or no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Um, Mala, is that a sufficient motion, or do you want to read all these resolutions? Um, I, I think if I could just clarify with Commissioner Kohler, that was the adoption of resolution 20-23, which is approving the final draft of the MSR. And then separately, there's resolutions 20-24 through 20-29, which Did reaffirms want, the various SOS. I thought those were separate. Do you want those all together? We, we can do them all I together. Think, okay, well then I will change my motion. So I would make a motion to approve uh, the final draft of the Upper Ross Valley Municipal Service Review with one change on page 16. And then I would make, uh, as part of that motion, adopt resolution 2023 with the same change uh, on the resolution, approving final draft of the Upper Ross Valley Municipal Services Review, um, adopt resolution 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028 and 2029. And then you're also going to add approval of adding the work plan report update to the work plan? Oh, I apologize and approve the work plan from the report. Perfect. Thank you. That was a Fair heroic back. effort. So, yes, sir. Before we vote, I just wanted to um, make sure in, in the document we have pretty extensive comments from Richard Berkson and Richard regularly attends the Cal AFCO meetings, is uh, pretty involved in the details of um, these documents and Cal AFCO proceedings. Uh, so, Jaron and Jason, it looks like you reviewed these and adopted those. I just want to make sure uh, there's some dialogue back with Richard and his extensive comments. Yeah, no, we replied back to his comments. Uh, he, he kind of was very accepting of what we had to say. He there was one area where he made in his comments where he makes reference to uh, uh, the state controller's office and some uh, things that we might want to look at there. Uh, we've actually, he, I've said to him, like, which ones do you want us to look like? Which one? There's so many of them. Which ones are in particular do you think are useful? Um, so we've had some back and forth with him on all this stuff. And we'll be, we're looking at his uh, <coughs> indicators for future MSRs because it was just too late in this process to add him to this one. But we are looking at what indicators he also uses. You're right. He is a consultant and writes MSRs as a consultant for other LAFCOs. Um, so it was very good to have someone who has that professional expertise take a look at one of these. Great, thank you. Would you like to make the second, Vice Chair Murray? <laughs> okay, I'll second Barbara's uh, a very detailed motion. Thank you. Olivia, will you please call the roll? Chair McEntee? Aye. Vice Chair Murray? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? Aye. Commissioner Arnold? Mute. Commissioner Arnold? Aye. Commissioner Kohler? Aye. Commissioner Caius? Aye. Commissioner Loader? <clears throat> Gotta get an unmute. Aye. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Olivia. We will move on to our business item, our one and only business item, approval of payroll service system agreement for LAFCO employees. 
Yeah, so in front of you today, you have, um, as you know, we've been talking about the fact that we got switched over to ADP by the county. Um, ADP has been very problematic. Uh, their customer service has been virtually non-existent for us. <coughs> um, and they have not been properly paying our state taxes, um, partly due to an error of the county entering stuff in, but also partly to even when we tried to correct it, they just didn't have the means to do it correctly. Um, we've been fixing it and we've worked with them to get it fixed, but it was a Herculean effort. <coughs> um, so one of the things I wanted to do, and we talked about this at a previous meeting, was see if there's other payroll service companies that are out there. Um, I went out, as my staff report will tell you, we went out, I went out to all the other LAFCOs, to all the special districts in Marin County and said, who do you use if you use an outside service? Got a list of them, uh, whittled that down, got four proposals after talking to that list. The best proposal that came in was from Paychex. It was both, both the best in cost savings. Um, and I, I want to thank them as well as a couple of the other uh, bidder, people who we were talking with. They actually helped us find answers to our state, pay, state tax issue. They were actually helping us find out more than ADP help was helping us as our current payroll provider. So I want to thank them for helping that, us with that. But at the end of the day, they came down with the best, uh, the best uh, bid proposal. All of them administratively seemed to be fine, but it was just their cost was so much cheaper. One of the reasons why we were partly getting a cheaper cost from them is because of our relationship with Bank of Marin, they actually, Bank of Marin uses them for all their small businesses that are looking for someone to run their payroll services. And so they have a direct relationship with paychecks. And as a Bank of Marin customer, we get a heavy discount on all of our uh, needs from them. So <clears throat> it was rather nice that we got that little extra bonus there. Um, and so what's in front of you today is uh, a sample agreement with them with the proposal that you have as attachments um, and I'm requesting that you tonight agree to have us enter into an agreement with paychecks that you authorize me to do the proper process to inform ADP that we'll no longer be using their services we'll have to make sure that we're timing things correctly so we're notifying ADP at the right time when paychecks will actually be coming online for us because we clearly don't want to go without a paycheck period because that would be bad for the employees and for LAFCO as a whole um, and then finally, um, based on Marin LAFCO policies, um, anytime we transfer money from the county account to something else, we need to uh, have the commission approve it. So I'm asking for you tonight is to authorize kind of on a semi-temporary basis for us to quarterly be able to transfer money from the county account to our Bank of Marin account so we can do payroll service payments out of Bank of Marin. Talking with Alyssa, who's our bookkeeper, Doing it this way will save us a lot of time and energy and not having to go through munis and enter a bunch of stuff in because we it has really been problematic with ADP and that problem doesn't go away if we stay in munis. So some of those problems actually get better for us with Bank of Marin. So we want to be able to transfer money out of our county account into Bank of Marin. We're looking at right now <coughs> doing that quarterly, <coughs> excuse me, doing that quarterly so we can actually um, keep our as much money as we can with the county because we get interest in our county account. Um, without having to overburden us every paycheck having to transfer money out because then that gets costly on the staff time and like the transfer of funds costs and all those other things. So we tried to figure out what was a good balance. Um, Southern Marin Fire kind of has a similar situation where they transfer money out quarterly and that's where Alyssa, that she's their chief financial director for, um, for them. And so she suggested the quarterly amount. So I'm asking for authorization to transfer the next quarter that would be needed for this. I will come back at a future meeting um, with an actual policy change for a policy handbook to just automatically authorize me to make the, the transfer without having to come back to the commission every quarter to get that transfer. But for the first one, we needed to at least get this approval done today. So those are your options in front of you. Um, if we want to leave ADP, which staff is highly encouraging us to do, um, it has been very problematic with them. We want to uh, switch over to paychecks and I will yield any questions at this point. Thank you. Uh, it looks like Vice Chair Murray has a question and then uh, Commissioner Kohler. So Jason, thanks for your work on this. We, we spoke and sound like Paychecks is uh, very detailed and provided some good recommendations uh, on accounts and some of the differences. Uh, the draft uh, agreement is uh, 18 pages, although a lot of it is, seems boilerplate, just kind of description of terminology, things like this. I just want to make sure that this kind of routes through legal, so Mala had a chance to review it and, yes. and uh, okayed it before, before before we're seeing it. Is that right? B BBK did review it. Uh, Mala has associates that work on contracts. They looked at it. 
to be fair, there's always in these spoiler play contracts that come from the other side, there's always some problematic issues in them that, you know, you're just never going to get around with these big companies. Um, ADP had some of the very similar language in them and, you know, they're just not willing to negotiate. I tried asking questions, would you negotiate some of these things? And they're just like, no, this is our contract. You take it or leave it um, type of a thing. So if we wanted to go, there are some smaller firms that I'm not recommending today because they were much more expensive um, that we potentially could have those discussions with because it's small CPAs doing the work themselves. <coughs> um, but the question comes is for the cost, what's the risk that actually any of these problematic issues are going to come up? Like the biggest one for, for me all generally is, you know, if anything occurs, we have to go to New York to have any legal action taken. We're clearly not in New York. It's going to be harder for us to do that. But what's the likelihood that we're actually ever going to need to take legal action against them and have to go to New York to do it? extremely slim. So I think the risk is there, but it's such a slim risk. It's worth just accepting what they have because over time we're going to save more money by, by having this contract rather than a smaller company. Thanks. Commissioner Kohler. Um, first of all, uh, Jason, you did incredible work. Um, if I ended up correctly, it looks like it's around 2000 a year. Is, does that make sense? Um, for the first year, it's a little bit more expensive. Let me go to. I don't need. I don't need like precise. I saw that. The annual fee um, is should be about fourteen hundred a month uh, a year, right. um, and then there is the um, W two form for employees, which adds another like hundred dollars to it. So you're really talking about, you know, fifteen hundred dollars is really what you're looking at at the end of the day. And then there's the one time fee to start up the system, which is separate from that. Okay, I thought there was a monthly fee, but, but that um, that looks great. And just to refresh my memory, I thought we were paying a whole lot of money to ADP for their kind of horrible system, right? Technically, we have not started paying them yet because the county is covering our costs right now. Right. But yes, ADP is a lot more expensive. Uh, they're like five, $600 more for their system when we start paying for it. And you have to deal with the munis and all that. Correct. Um, just one quick question. You, you mentioned something about ultimately moving out of the county. Does that mean that you would want to move the money away from the county and move it to the Bank of Marin or, or wherever? Yeah. So or what does that mean? Yeah, so because we have money that's in the, our county account, I want to keep as much as we can in that account because we get interest off of it. Um, but in order to make payroll occur, what we've been doing is we've been making payroll out of the county account. So it just automatically gets pulled out of what's in our current county account every pay period to pay it off. With um, Bank of, with using paychecks and the relationship they have with Bank of Marin, we want to start using Bank of Marin account to start doing our payroll checks out of. Um, okay, so I get that. Yeah. Okay. So we're just transferring money. Instead of having the money sit there um, all year and then pull out as we need it for ADP from, cause we use eight, the county system. We're transferring quarterly. I want to transfer our payroll, the amount that we need quarterly over to Bank of Marin so we can make our payrolls every, every pay period. Yeah. I thought there was a sentence in your report that talked about ultimately moving out of the county. I must've misread it. Well, thank you so much for that explanation and your hard work. Thank you. Any further questions from the commission? Seeing none, I'll go to public comment on this item. There is no public comment and uh, there are no emails. Thank you very much. We will close public comment on this item and bring it back to the commission for deliberation. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, transfer over to Paychex. Second. To do staff recommendation, first staff recommendation. Um, Olivia, will you please call the roll? Yeah. Chair McEntee? Aye. Vice Chair Murray? Aye. Commissioner Connolly? You. Commissioner, you need to unmute yourself. Commissioner Connolly? Aye. David? Commissioner Arnold? Aye. Commissioner Kohler? Aye. Commissioner Caius? Aye. Commissioner Loader? Aye. Chair, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Olivia. Executive officer report. Can I just ask a question? There were two other items in Jason's recommendation. One was authorizing not just signing an agreement with paychecks, but 
executive officer proper process to inform ADP we will not be using their services going forward and then authorizing the executive officer to transfer the funds quarterly. Did we do that in that motion? I didn't hear it. That, uh, it, was the, it was for the staff recommendation. Is that correct? Um, That's right. Motion maker, That's including right. okay. all of those things. Uh, okay. Thanks for checking. Okay, Jason, go ahead with your executive officer report. Sure, before I get into the official report stuff, I, as you all have seen, we have a new staff person. This is her first meeting with us. I wanted to welcome Olivia, give her a chance to wave hi to all of you. Um, she has been doing amazing, great work so far. Um, in front of you today is a completely remediated uh, board packet. Uh, it's the first time I believe we've actually had a completely ADA compliant uh, remediated. Oh, packet. yay. Mm -hmm. um, and she, not knowing how to do any ADA compliance at all when she first started with us, has figured it out over her first two months of being here. So <laughs> wow. I want to give her a huge round of applause for that. She also has already remediated all of the 2020 resolutions. Of course, she hasn't done the ones done today, but up until today's resolutions. Um, and what you're gonna start seeing occur on our website is we're gonna start creating a resolution library so we can start posting every resolution. Perfect. We're gonna keep all the ones we're currently doing. And over time, she's slowly gonna start going back to previous years and getting all those done all the way, hopefully back to 1963, although we're a little nervous when you start getting back to some of those because they start coming on weird colored paper with weird typesets and it just might be a little too hard for us to actually remediate. So there may come a point when we stop doing that, but our goal is to go as far back as we can um, and do that. So that's one of her you know, side projects. She's been very active and involved already in a fire study work. Um, that's one of, her, one of her junior analyst side responsibilities is the fire study. <coughs> um, so she's really starting to, to move on that one. Um, and start, starting to do her research on that. So I just want to welcome her to staff um, and just let you all know she's here. If you have any questions, anything that's clerk related or any questions you have at all about what's going on in LAFCO, you can always come to me, but Olivia is now here as well. You can always, as you know, always talk to Jared and all three of us are always available for you. Um, Thank you, Olivia. And, and, I, and uh, with the ADA remediation, I, I, that's also really helpful because it makes all the documents searchable. So it really increases our level of transparency. So that, it makes a big difference. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. So then moving on to our, uh, the actual items on the agenda here, budget update in the report is, uh, is our budget update. We're you know, on task, on time with our, with our budget, not over budget. The one thing I will add is you will notice our agency, agency contribution line is a little shy in the report. Um, I just received two days ago um, the August, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, the September update. The missing money from that agency line item was in the September report from the county. So when you see our next report, you should see that every penny has been collected from all of our agencies. Um, all of them, but one actually turned it in on time. Uh, the other one was like a week late uh, from the 60 day review period. So I'm very happy to see that. And overall, we're, we're doing just fine on our overall budget. You know, a few line items are a little high as we're last month, which are the ones that you pay everything up front. And so you don't really see much going on in those line items moving on. Um, happy to answer any questions if you have them. If not, I will move on to the next uh, item. <laughs> um, current and propending proposals. Um, we don't have any current proposals in place. We continue to be a little quiet, although today we did receive um, a potential application from uh, Marin Water, uh, who has self-reporting themselves, having realized that they've been serving a customer for quite some time that is just outside their district boundaries, um, and they are going to be putting together an application to correct that and submitting it to us. Um, it just uh, one of those things that you occasionally run across, and they, I'm happy that they're self-reporting it. So we'll, we'll try and make that as easy as possible for them, and they're just putting together the final paperwork. I hope to get that back and finalized soon. Um, you'll also notice that the emergency OSA um, from quite a while ago, they are finally getting re-engaging with, um, they actually have a new contractor on board. They have engaged with San Rafael, have put, submitted all their stuff. I understand this week, I think it was, the city of San Rafael signed off on that emergency connection. Um, and the applicant has also re-engaged us about, he's currently working on getting his map and legal description finalized so we can resubmit and permanently be annexed into the, the sanitary district. It's part of the country club area. Um, so we should hopefully soon be getting that application and we'll move that one forward through its process once we get it. Um, but outside of that, all is quiet on the uh, front. This will be one of the areas you might notice in the staff report that Olivia has taken over who it's from. 
she's going to be as our clerk slash junior analyst, she can handle actually both sides of this process. So she's gonna be taking the lead on proposals. <clears throat> I will of course be working with her to help make sure she gets stuff done as she's learning that process as we kind of wait for our first official one to go through. Um, but she'll Jason, I, I, Jason, I do wanna note that you, that you and staff have also done some sort of pre-proposal pre work with a number of different applicants and, and just, you know, if you, and if you want to just, you don't have to give details, but just uh, there, there, are, there are things coming to you that you often kind of help, help the applicants scope out and decide when they want to actually put their application fee in so they're not uh, putting, putting a fee in that isn't going to result in a good result. That is very true. We, we have one that's in Mill Valley that you're well aware of, uh, Commissioner McEntee. Um, that's an OSA that's outside of Mill Valley, but they need to connect into their sewer line. Um, so we're working on that one. And there's a, a few others. A lot of them are very septic tank related just because I think people are, septic tanks get old and need to be replaced. And if they're near a sewer line, they're supposed to connect to sewers. So those are the bulk of them. And there's we probably have like five or six of them floating out there right now, but they're- And you and you were working with the, I think it was with the county um, to, fig, to get it more of a definition or maybe it was Nevada to get more of a definition on eminent failure on septic. Um, so there, there is stuff that is going on that you're working on. I just wanted to, to make sure the commission understood that some of the other work you're doing that's not reflected here. Yeah, you actually hit on the Novato uh, group one I, that I wanted to talk about. We, we had that application at the last meeting um, where the applicant <coughs> withdrew uh, because of all the issues that were going on and we wanted to have a discussion about Novato or urban growth boundary. I was able to set up that meeting. Um, we, we, I have since talked with, we had a county staff and uh, Novato staff there. Um, it, the issue is not easy thing to resolve, but Novato staff was very willing to like have a discussion about can we get a, defini a definition of what intimate means. They are working it through their process to determine first off because it's a voter approved initiative, can they define what what it means because it's not defined in the voter approved thing. So they're having that discussion and if they if legal counsel come back and says yes you can, then they're going to have a discussion about what does it actually mean and, and does the city actually want to make a definition or not? So they're in the early steps of that process. Um, the one thing that was kind of nice to know is they said they've had not necessarily in this particular case or this type of situation, but they've had other people come to them for amendments going through that process I described last time where the city council meets by a four or fifth vote, they can amend in certain situations. They've had some of those situations go through their process and have been just fine going through the process. So it's good to know that the city council doesn't necessarily block things simply because uh, the, the urban growth boundaries there, but where they have the ability to give uh, amendments to it, they, they do use those, that process. So it's good to know that that exists. Um, the county, you know, agreed that they, you know, they could potentially do a little bit better job on um, IDing things. Their problem is they don't necessarily know exactly where someone connects into a sewer line. They just know they're close to one. Um, so it's like one of those things like a chicken and the egg. You got to figure out if you're close enough to one, how you connect and then making sure the person knows um, that that connection could be a problem. So it, it's something that they're going to be working on um, as well. So we did have that meeting and discussion. Um, and then, <coughs> excuse me, update on uh, MSRs. Uh, we approved one tonight. Jaron is already working on the Twin Cities. I've reached out and had a meeting with a few people from that area. I'm still trying to get a few more meetings done from the public side, um, but things are a little bit slow on that front right now. Um, one other thing that you should be aware of, uh, our next working group is Western Marin. Some of the great work Olivia has been doing on just trying to update some of our systems and update some of our information is, we realized while we did some of the Western Marin ones as part of the water study in 2016, some of those districts actually do multiple services. And when we did the 2016 report, we only looked at their water. Um, so you'll probably see us coming back at, at our next meeting for an update to the MSR schedule to add in some of those districts into the Western Marin one so that we can review their entire organization and not just one aspect of it. So I wanna thank Olivia for, as she was doing some other research as to when the last time was we did an, an SOI for any area, she uh, kind of discovered that we didn't do SOI updates for 2016 or 2017 MSRs. So we need to, which kind of led us to the point of, well, wait, some of these actually do other things too, um, which was a fun little discussion we've been having. And unfortunately, Jaron's been out of the office the last few days so he is not aware yet that we're adding extra work to his Western Marin MSR until tonight. So congratulations, Jaron, your next MSR just got a little bit bigger, uh, but we'll bring that back to you for a full discussion at our next meeting uh, to approve a, an amendment to our work schedule on that. Um, 
And then, discuss, and then the final thing I wanted to uh, <coughs> bring up that's on the agenda tonight, and I have one item after that, is discussion of the annual workshop. Um, as you may remember, unfortunately, Bill Shiat, who's been running our workshops, passed away earlier this year. Um, so a very, very sad moment trying to figure out what we want to do for our next workshop. But it also brings up the question of how do we want to have a workshop? And I want to have a brief discussion on do we want to continue to do the same thing? In some ways, the last couple, at least since I've been here, have been about who is, who is Marin Lafco and how do we get ourselves back to a functioning state? I hope that you all feel that we're now at that functioning state and we're moving things forward. Um, but if we still need to have that discussion, I'm happy to have it. But perhaps we should have a discussion about is there something else we want to be doing with an annual workshop with also the understanding that likely whatever we do is Zoom. It's not going to be in person. So keep and, that and if, if, Yeah, system. and if I can jump in, Jason. Um, so uh, just for, all, for you all to think about, there are kind of two ways we could go. Um, one is, is there a topic that we want to dive, take a deeper dive on? In the, in the past, we had a, um, you know, kind of a desire to have a deeper dive into ducks, and we did a little duck subcommittee, and do, we did that there. So if there's, if there's a topic we feel like we want to take a deeper dive on, we can do that in a workshop. Um, my suggestion for this one is something I've been kind of, uh, an idea I've been kind of playing with and workshopping with Jason and some other folks is um, given the activity that we see kind of upcoming um, over the next year or so, um, there's a lot of, there have been a lot of shared services and consolidation kinds of conversations, um, particularly in district two and district three, where there are a lot of small cities and small districts. And uh, we thought maybe it would be a good idea to do some kind of workshop that would have, uh, that would be not just the commission, but get, you know, city and uh, district staff, um, you know, maybe have a, a public component, have some facilitated panels around shared services and consolidation um, kind of brainstorming or sort of, uh, you know, pre MSR thinking around that for District 2, District 3, possibly District 4. I think um, uh, we should talk to Alternate Commission Rodoni and see if he wants to throw them in, in the mix there too. Um, but I think that would be a really useful and interesting uh, workshop that we could lead as a neutral convener. In addition, uh, Mary Jane Burke, who's our County Superintendent of Schools, is interested in, in having some of her people participate just from the, even though it's not part of our jurisdiction, it's something that the public would kind of consider under one umbrella. So we could fold her group into that as well um, and just sort of have that be an overarching set of topics. So wanted to kind of get everybody's thoughts on taking either of those approaches. I think this um, District 2, District 3 workshop is something I'd like to see us do sometime next year and we could have it do, do that as part of our annual workshop that we do with the commission or separately. So just anyone have any thoughts on what they'd like to see? Sashi, just can you uh, talk about the school involvement? I, I mean, there's been discussions at state level. It's always been kind of the third rail. No one ever wanted to really kind of touch the schools. It's uh, just an area that no one kind of dives into. It, it may be interesting to see uh, maybe some self-reflection on, on the schools, I guess, other than our county grand jury. No one really kind of reviews that. Uh, and for a public benefit, that, that may be one spot in time or even though it's not within our jurisdiction we could host and exactly um, I think yeah. that's I think that's kind of what you're you're thinking right so we exactly we touch that yeah. base and provide some time but not necessarily in our purview yeah exactly so just just to because the same public would be interested in both topics um, having that be a, a piece of what we put together um, I think like you said would be a public benefit Yeah, I, I do think um, we're going to have varying levels of folks coming in. Some, what is LAFCO, how it operates. I think with a more robust website, uh, perhaps uh, the announcement could reflect that there's information, that base type information is on on the website. And it's too bad we didn't uh, film Bill Chiat in the past because he really mm. had some great insights and we could have had these recorded meetings that people really wanted to do the deeper dive they could have seen that um, but um, I, I agree with Jason's comment is I, I think we're kind of turning the corner and we, we don't have to keep redoing the same thing uh, and what's really kind of unique to Marin what do people want to see and view 
it could, you know, it could be a trigger from grand jury or just kind of how we're all feeling. And perhaps Pam Miller from uh, California, Alaska, our, our executive officer, she may have some input as well. And she participated in a meeting, I think it was two meetings ago uh, for us. So there, yeah. there may be some insight there as well. Yeah. Tashi, I have a comment. Uh, I, I think that this format is great for this number of people. But if we have a whole lot of public, um, we become little postcards, little tiny postage stamps. And it's really hard to have a discussion. So uh, I, I would welcome a, a more larger public in, involvement, but we may have to wait until we can be in a room again. Well, and I think there's there. I think uh, thank you, Todd. I, I think that there are other ways to do it. I'm actually was planning on talking to Jason and the staff about it afterwards. The way that we do it um, with the city of Mill Valley is that you don't have to make everybody a co-host, but you can make. There's a way to do it where you have the public um, that are just um, uh, audio only audio, and then you can kind of see who their, their participants, and then you have the panelists. So I think there's a way to do that where you don't have all the little poster shits where only the panelists are are seen and everybody else is. Um, yeah. We to use a chat, a chat room style. Um, uh, our, our, we had a Zoom that was photo, was bombed recently, and it was disastrous. Oh wow! Um, so uh, we have and to get happen. some good. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Thanks, Todd, uh, and uh, uh, Alternate Commissioner Skelton. Yeah, I was going to say I, I really like the idea about the uh, the districts uh, two and three. I think it'd be uh, yeah a good change of pace. I'm um, maybe a little bit more hesitant about the school component. Uh, I feel like it's a pretty contentious issue right now, um, which sometimes can generate a really healthy and robust dialogue, but it also falls outside of, frankly, LAFCO's purview and like just general opportunity to add value. And so we would become more of just a, maybe a, a moderator than anything else. Um, as an alternative, I wanted to suggest that in this format, whether it would be worthwhile to basically co-host an annual retreat with someone like Sonoma or Napa. Um, if we have, I, I think we have turned the corner and now it may be an opportunity to not only look uh, internally, but also externally at what our neighboring jurisdictions doing or grappling with and how can we learn from each other. Um, and maybe there, you know, in terms of formatting, doing, you know, small breakout, you know, do a breakout room to make it more of a lively discussion um, uh, to Commissioner Moody's point and really make it, I guess, active and worthwhile. Thank you. Barbara, I would just say um, I agree with Commissioner Skelton. Uh, I think if we're going to do something, we really should do something that's within our purview rather than branching out to something that is not ours. And then I think it's confusing enough for people to understand what LAFCO is about without sort of adding that other layer. And I do like the idea of, of more of, maybe it's more of a retreat type idea with our partner counties so that we can find out more about what we're all working on. For example, our fire study is something that that may be of interest to them, but also there may be things like that that they're taking up that we could learn from and consider in the future. I would also suggest, I don't know how we're doing Zoom, but I think we ought to consider Zoom web webinars, which is what we use in the city. And in a Zoom webinar, we're all panelists. And then the folks, I'm sure that's what you do in Mill Valley, and then the folks that call in are not part of the picture. They get, they get brought in one at a time. But I think if we were doing something like Chris suggested, um, I mean, a friend of mine just did, she's an EPA attorney. She did a training with 188 EPA attorneys across the country on Zoom. Uh. It can be done, and it was very effective. And, you know, it was all on Indian law, which is what she's an expert in. So I think we, we could do something like that. And, and I'd like to see us maybe learn more from other LAFCOs. And given that under Jason and uh, this commission's leadership with you, Sashi, at the helm, my short time here, I think we've come so far and we're really at a good point. So it really is a, 
to me, I, I really like Chris's suggestion. Okay. Uh, just to address the, the Zoom webinar stuff, we have the ability to do that. I, when I signed up for stuff back in March, um, I was looking at like what costs were and what was the likelihood of how many people we had in these things. From a cost perspective, I went with the basic program, the paid one, which is why we're in this system. I have no problem going up to the webinar if that's what people want to do. Um, it's just because we meet every other month, the cost to do that gets a little bit more expensive. And so I was trying to figure out how do we balance between the two. If we ever had a very contentious meeting that I saw coming up, I would definitely be moving us into a webinar and paying for that price. So I'm happy to create a webinar system for us. It's not a big deal to me. I'm just trying to figure out how we manage costs with the amount of times we actually would use a webinar. And I think that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Maybe it's a one-time deal or yeah. a two-time deal. And I, and I think I think you can do that, right? You can you can go into the higher tier and you can come back down. So yeah, we could right. consider that for, like you said, for meetings where we can sit, uh, assume we're going to have a lot more participants or something like this workshop once a year. Correct. Okay. Um, really like the suggestion to um, co-host a workshop with neighboring counties. I, I think that this particular thing could be sort of a both end because we have a, a, an immediate local need for these shared services consolidation discussions. Um, but I do think that. Um, particularly after this year, once we've done the fire study, um, that we'll have quite a bit to offer our neighboring counties um, and we'll have done um, some very interesting things that you know maybe Jason and staff might consider presenting at a Cal LAFCO uh, workshop. So yeah, I think that um, Jason, I know you meet regularly with the, with the Bay Area um, EOs. So maybe that's something you guys can discuss in your next meeting and see what would be a, uh, something that people would be interested in doing. Yeah, no, happy to do it, Mike. A, since we have Zoom, and that's how we're going to be meeting in all likelihood, we could we don't have to relieve just to Bay Area ones. We could actually reach beyond Bay Area because all of us would be meeting via Zoom anyways. Um, you know, we could do, um, since you were, uh, Jason, you've talked a few times, you and I have talked a few times about the uh, the fee structure and about small LAFCOs versus larger LAFCOs and kind of how that works out. We could also consider um reaching out to some of the similar size LAFCOs that are yeah. in other parts of the country. Uh, and that's what I was going to suggest. Rather. My question is, do we want to do one other LAFCO? Would we, do you want to see maybe two or three LAFCOs? What are you looking for? And I can try and reach out and see if any LAFCOs are willing to join us. I just want I, I think, I think you, I think you'd want to match make, ideally it would be nice to match make with, with another LAFCO with whom we could have a profitable exchange. Like if we, okay. you know, we have, we, you know, we've just done a fire study and maybe they've just done a really great water study or something like that. And we can kind of go back and forth. Um, and each provide some value to the other. Um, it'd be nice for there to be a, 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 a mutual exchange of value. Um, yeah. But if, if, if that were not able to occur with just one, then I, I, you know, I could see more, than, more okay. than one, but I think that's the, the idea would be a mutual exchange of, of information and value, I think. I, um, I'll figure something out with you for you guys. If there's a, if any other comments and want to hear them. Uh, Jason, okay. Tashi. So, yeah. so I'm, urban growth boundary is one of the issues that comes up that we're kind of struggling with. I know Ventura had a presentation at a Cal Lafco meeting on that. I, I'm kind of thinking topical items. And then also there's uh, some uh, comments on uh, best practices. Um, and Marin was looked at for animal control services. And this was after massive floods and this sort of thing. So, um, we, we may want to look at kind of topical items, one looking outwards and then others participating what Marin offers that uh, are kind of unique and best practices that they may want to hear a presentation on. So I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking in, in regards to this type of format and some topical expert in each of these LAFCOs uh, speaking and then a dialogue back and forth like a Q and A uh, with those experts um, and perhaps application for Marin, that, that may be a format that may be interesting. Okay. Very good. S Sashi? Yes, Lou. Just, just a logistics practicality consideration. Our planning sessions, our annual workshops, whatever, are already gone three hours. If we're combining our three hours with somebody else's three hours, now we're talking about a five or six hour kind of session. And those get to be awfully long and tiresome. So I would suggest that if we do try to do a joint session of some kind that is meaningful to both parties, that we really tighten up what we're doing and what's being covered so they don't go into very, very long, you know, not as effective kind of sessions. 
just a consideration. I think that's very smart and uh, well advised that we would do so. Okay, if there are any further comments, Jason, I know you had one other item. Yeah, so just one other item that's not on the agenda with Olivia having started now, um, she'll be taking over making sure you're all signing your stipend checks uh, to get your, your the stipend forms to get your checks. Um, at this point, what she's going to do is either tomorrow or at the latest on Monday, send out that form to everyone who wants to get that stipend. Uh, I know a commissioner that doesn't want it, so we're going to, you won't get it yourself, but everyone else will get that, that stipend form. Um, fill it out. When you fill it out and return it to us, that's when we will start cutting your check um, to make sure everything is stayed together so we're not cutting checks before we have the, the form itself. So I just wanted to give you all an update on how that process is going to work now that um, Olivia is now here and able to help me handle that situation a little bit better than me just cutting checks in and then trying to remember to send you the forms to fill out. Um, so on that note, that's all I have for the executive officer's report. Jason, can I just add, I'll make things pretty easy. I'll attach the form that needs to be signed, already completely filled out with the meeting information and everything. So it's really just print it out, sign it, scan it back. I think all it calls for is initials, but what you all sent back to me last time is a signature at the bottom and that's just as fine. So I'll make it super easy and it, it will most likely come to you tomorrow. Perfect. Okay question on making it super easier now that we have Olivia can we look into electronic signatures we're fine with electronic signatures on it if you have one just paste no it I don't have one I'm thinking maybe she could work on that you know well and, di and direct deposit is I don't know if that's ask paychecks if they can do no that. no I mean I'm, I think <laughs> we have a young person who can do everything there's technically a service called DocuSign I'm right. not sure I'm not sure if it costs money, but what I'll do is I'll look into it. Probably does. It, have yeah. a conversation with Jason and just see if there's a way for us to make electronic signatures possible, but I will give that a look. Docu yeah, DocuSign does, does work. DocuSign is great. DocuSign also costs money. I use it all the time on my business things. So. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we find, find out how much it is and see whether it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything further, Jason? Yep, that's all I've got. Good. Any commissioner announcements or requests? Sashi, um, I want to honor someone in Marin County. So I, I'll hold this up. That's Forrest R. Morphew. Oh, Forrest. He was, he's a, the longest he, running special district member. He yeah, is, I saw that. Uh, was superstar in Marin County and hailing from SASM area. So uh, Forrest died September 15th of this year of congestion heart failure. He's a centenarian, 101 years old, uh, he, w deep into his 90s, still serving. If you go down the Blackie's Pasture where Richardson Bay Sanitary District is, there's a plaque of a forest, uh, and, uh, all his efforts there. So uh, anyway, he served 35 years. He, uh, he survived the Great Depression in Texas, enlisted in the U.S. Navy uh, before Japan attacked us in 1941. He served on the USS San Juan as part of Admiral Halsey's Third Fleet, and uh, he is very uh, honored to be in Tokyo Bay when the Japanese surrendered. Uh, under the GI Bill, he attended and graduated from Stanford University. Uh, he is a private businessman. Uh, he had an Atlantic Richfield company. Uh, many properties owned uh, in the Kerner Boulevard area, and if you go to City of Santa Fe's corporate yard, uh, he donated property to City of Santa Fe, Morphew Street, which is their address. Um, he had diesel products. Um, one of the things I, I remembered, uh, just because I kind of grew up in that era, is uh, uh, Sammy Hagar, who lived here in Marin, wrote the song, I Can't Drive 55. And he'd go to his business to get this high volume uh, uh, gasoline for his, his vehicle. So that, that was kind of fun. Uh, he wrote children's books, uh, eight children's books. Um, it just, just uh, it goes on and on. If you get a chance, read uh, the Tiburon Arc or the Marin IJ. Uh, just a special guy. Uh, really honored to serve a few years while he is in Richardson Bay. I, I know everybody has served with him. I was very honored to serve with him. A great guy. One of our superstars in Marin County. So I, I want to close. I want to on, for all the special districts in Marin, I want to honor Forrest R. Murphy uh, and tonight, close tonight's meeting in honor of him uh, and uh, wish his family the best.
That's an excellent just, idea, Commissioner, Mur uh, Commissioner Murray. And, and as, as I recall, uh, Forrest was the longest serving special district board member in the county. Do you, do you know that? I, I believe he was at one point. I don't think anyone's beat his record. Um, Commissioner Kais, right. did you have something? Yeah, he was. And I just say, I, I worked with Forrest. I knew Forrest well. Great guy. And we're going to honor him at the SASM board meeting that's coming up in a week. So mm -hmm. he hasn't been forgotten. We're going to cover it at SASM. Great, Lou. Lou, do you think we, uh, you've got something we should um, also note in, in Mill Valley? We should, maybe we should do that as well. I mean, I, I don't. You guys are covering it. Up to you. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't push it that far. He didn't live in Mill Valley. He lives in in Richardson yeah. Bay or in Strawberry. Yeah. But he was, exactly. you know, involved in in SASM. Uh, so I know from SASM and Richardson Bay. Um, so we're going to do that at the SASM board meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Caius. Sure. Well, so then that leads us very naturally into uh, the motion to adjourn. So um, it oh. sounds like uh, Commissioner Mur Vice Chair Murray is sort of making a motion to adjourn in honor of um, Forrest Morphew, and uh, I guess Commissioner Caius would probably second that. I'll second that, yep. All right. Olivia, will you please call the roll? Uh, no more calls needed, we can just adjourn. We can just adjourn, okay, all right. <laughs> then we will adjourn in the memory of Forrest Morphew and uh, give our best to his family and thank, thank them for his years of service. And we'll adjourn to our next meeting Thursday, December 10th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Thank you all for being here. All right, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.